I'm going to call this a TNT. We haven't done one of these in a while, and I'll get started on it right after this. Hey! Oh, Rocket Chick. Hello there. So we haven't done one of these in a while. So I wanted to ask you guys something. Uh, actually, I, I don't want to say you guys. I hate saying you guys. I don't know why YouTubers want to refer to everybody as a guy. Uh, I want to ask you folks something. Do any of you ever look at the description in my videos? Every one of my videos has a description to it. And if you scroll down into and look in that description, you'll find that you'll see this thing. What I have highlighted right here. This is called my video channel index. And if you click on this link, it'll take you to my Google Sheets where I have this document shared. And you'll see that it's an index of all of my videos. Okay? <clears throat> and all the ones, all the videos that are, uh, well, just like this shows here, all these, when you see the little tick mark in the corner of the, uh, let me see here, let me look at mine just to make sure I don't sound like a complete idiot. Google Sheets is a spreadsheet. It's like Google's competition for Office, I guess, you know. So YouTube video index, that's what it is. My YouTube video index, you can see there's, there's an about, you know, there's, there's what basically what the video is about. You follow over to column F and you can see there where it's the link and then the ones that are, have Spanish subtitles, I'll put an in, uh, X out there. And if you look in the column J, there it says index. And what I mean by that, if you see that one, down there the, where I see a, the the word yes and you, if you just mouse over that little tick mark in the corner it shows you what is actually indexed in that video so you can get a lot of information I have I think this video today will make 350 videos that I have recorded in this index there's a little over 300 videos there are some videos that I've removed and and that that I didn't put in the index because they're really not worthy of it. They're shorts. They're they're videos that are stupid stuff that doesn't really amount to anything. Doesn't mean anything. So anyway, that's my video index. I put a link to it in the description on every video that I produce. And it's the, and why am I telling you this? Because there are people that write to me and ask me specific questions about a topic that I've already covered. So many things that people ask me about, I've covered in my videos. And if you just you take advantage of this link, follow to my Google Sheets document, my video index, and you can find everything that I've talked about. So, some of them, you'll see in the sheet there's a... a um, I have what's called a like a bonus video, you know, a bonus vid. That's in column K. And what that means is that there's a little clip on the end of the video that you might want to watch. Okay, it's usually bloopers and TikTok videos that I like to share. Stupid stuff. So that's that's all for your information, okay? Now, I want to talk about some comments that I got yesterday after yesterday's video about you know being able to answering John's email uh, Mark Tanney wrote John has enough money but I think he is make, making one mistake he seems to have the understanding that he can know in advance that he will love Ecuador from day one and that he already knows sitting here right now that he will want to stay for 20 years there is just no way to know that. The culture shock here is pretty extreme. Okay, and he went on to say a bunch of other stuff, but I wanna, I wanna bring this up again, the culture shock. Let me tell you something. 
When I moved here in 21, May of 2021, I had preconceived notions of what I was going to be looking at. I, I, I had a vision in my mind, you know, from daydreaming and from listening to other YouTubers, uh, rainbows and unicorn descriptions of Ecuador. And I'll tell you, when I, I arrived at Waikil late at night in the dark, went straight to the hotel, got up the next morning, ate breakfast, got in the taxi, and we started heading toward Manta. And I'll tell you what, by the time we got out of Waikil, I was almost sick to my stomach. And it's just pure culture shock is all it was. I wanted to vomit. It was so bad. I, I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. And it got worse and worse the further we went. And we got down to Crescita, which is where I spent the first night. And I discovered that this wasn't what I thought it was going to be. You know, you see torn up roads, houses, buildings, look like they're about to fall down. You see so much poverty everywhere. You see a highway, the highway going from Waikil to Monta is a shit highway full of potholes, no shoulders in a lot of places, no safe place to pull over. There are some, but I mean, it's like when you're used to driving around in the United States or anywhere in North America and then you come to Ecuador and you see the way the roads are built the houses are built. You see houses with no windows. They have openings, but there's no window. You know, maybe just a curtain, you know. And you see so much poverty that it's shocking. Unless you come from a bad neighborhood, you know, every major city has them. But, I mean, the culture shock thing is a real thing. And it took me days to even... To, it took me days to stop thinking about wanting to go back home. The only bad thing about it is that I wouldn't have had a place to go to. Because I made I made this fatal mistake of getting rid of everything. We all know how I feel about that now. I still say, hold off, don't sell everything, wait a year, put in storage, rent your house out or something, you know, and then go down there and live and see what it's like. I've met some people here recently that arrived and you can see it in their face, the culture shock. I, 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 I want to cry for them, you know, because I know what it's like. But now on the good side of this, you do kind of get over it because there are places you can go in Monta, you know, that are uh, nicer neighborhoods and you see better conditions and that's probably where you're just going to want to stay. So Mark makes a good point there. He says that the culture shock is pretty extreme in ways you don't know until you live it. So keep in mind that you should think in six months to one year increments with the understanding that you may very well change your mind and end up somewhere far away from Ecuador five years from now. That could happen. But the beauty is, that's okay. Life is an adventure. Keep an open mind. I agree with that. With the financial resources you described, you can live well in 30 different countries. Ecuador is just one of them. So open your mind, open your heart, and take the dive. One thing I do highly recommend, if you do think you will end up in South America, Get serious about learning Spanish as soon as possible. I love it when people tell me, learn Spanish. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's the easiest thing in the world to do. It's not easy. Maybe for the younger people it might be, but boy, I tell you, it's been a real bitch for me. You know, I know a lot more Spanish now than I knew, you know, when I moved there. So, but... I do agree with Mark. I mean, learn what you can. At least learn, you know, how to get help, how to ask for things, how to ask for directions, and learn some common courtesy stuff like good morning, good afternoon, good night, 
thank you, and all that kind of stuff, okay? So, enough on that. I could probably, I could talk for hours about culture. It is definitely different, and that will lead me to uh, the next question that I want to share with you. Uh, great advice on exploratory trip. Um, don't know who this person is. And they use an alias. Good video, Don. Great advice on exploratory trip. Question. If you had more cash, you said you, uh, you want to come back to the USA. Why is that? What are some key things you find better in Ecuador and things better in the USA? Cost of living, safety, lifestyle, pros and cons. I've been all over South America. I've lived in Colombia. I love Argentina. Maybe do a video. I was born in the USA. I am an American citizen. I love the USA. I love Mesa, Arizona. I love where I'm sitting right now. I, you know, one of the things that I like about, you know, we hear about all the horrendous crime that takes place here in the U.S. I do have to say that, I mean, I agree, I, I know, I hear you, I get it. I know there's lots of crime here. There's, a, you know, 300 plus million people here and only 16 million in Ecuador. The kind of crime that bothers me is... I, here in this neighborhood that I'm in here in Mesa, I can go out and go for a walk and not even have to think about somebody sneaking up behind me and uh, sticking me in the back with a knife for my cell phone. You know, the petty crime. Petty crime is a major nuisance. I don't, I know very few people that have not been a victim of petty crime in Ecuador. I don't know of anybody really that, I know, I'm sure I do know some people that have never been affected by any kind of petty crime in Ecuador, but I know a lot of people that have been, myself included, two times. And I, I can remember when I lived here that I would take 10, 15, 20,000 dollars worth of camera gear and go downtown in Phoenix and interview homeless people and never once thought about getting robbed. In Ecuador, in Monta, it's always on my mind. So yeah, there are, there are a lot of things that are better here for me. This is my home here in the USA. Eventually, I will probably end up back here permanently. But obviously, a lot of things are going to have to change between now and then. There are a lot of great reasons for going to Ecuador just as well. The healthcare, the cost of living, the weather. You know, I have a great ocean view apartment for $700 a month. I, you know, I, I can find good and bad for both countries, obviously. I know a lot of people are going to come back and argue with me that the U.S. sucks and it's a disaster looking for a place to happen. And, you know, it's amazing how many people can prophesize all these problems and all these major trauma that's going to happen to this country, but nobody has any solutions. Nobody offers any solutions. I'd say, okay, if that's going to happen to us, what are we going to do next? And who knows? Nobody knows. Another comment, while I don't disagree with anything you said, I would add the following. The only thing worse than retiring too late is retiring too early to a place you end up not liking a year later, but you don't have enough resources to go back home. That's my situation. I Actually, I do have enough resources, but I want to own. I want to own my own place. I don't want to rent. I can live here. I can live here pretty comfortably on what I make. I do have money saved up, and I, you know, speaking of money, and I think I've brought this up before, when I sold out everything here and I moved to Ecuador, I had X amount of money in the bank. Today, I have more money in the bank than I had when I left here. 
and I've spent about $70,000 out of my pocket living in Ecuador in the last two years and seven months, eight months. May will be three years. So money's not really the issue. The problem here, I mean, yeah, well, money is the issue because uh, like right now, the cost of housing is just out of, out of limits and everybody knows that. So, you know, the condo that I own that I bought in 2010 for 135,000, I sold in 2021 for 263 and now they're they're wanting 343 for it. So, you know, I don't know what the answer is going to be. I don't know where I'm going to end up or how long I'm going to be in Ecuador. I don't have all those answers. Now, some people, you know, ask me why why did I, you know, make this decision to go there and I've done several videos about this but you know I'll just kind of wrap this up by telling you briefly what my story was for the benefit of those of you that are new to this channel I worked at, at, in the IT industry for almost 20 plus years I was working at American Airlines here in Phoenix when the pandemic hit and we were basically all sent home. I live in a 55 and older community where, uh, except for about five months out of the year, I'm the only person on my street. And so when I had to go work from home, you know, I had neighbors cause it was winter time, you know, but I was looking at extreme isolation, you know, come May of that year and in addition to the fact that American Airlines hired an ass hat and put him in charge of IT and he, this ass hat decided to break up all the teams and convert the place into this new agile environment and told all of us that we had to go and learn new things and like I had to go learn to be a developer and then I had to teach other people on my new team how to do what I do, and it was just destroying our job. It, I don't know how many people left, and the ass hat that named Ross, who came to American and screwed everything up in the IT industry, uh, has since left and gone back to his previous company. Where he, but I, I had no choice. I mean, I was at the point because of the pandemic. I said I'm going to get out of this country and go somewhere where I can live. And I had been researching it for years and I ended up in Ecuador. So do I regret it? In a lot of ways I do. My biggest regret was having so, so I, I wish I hadn't sold my condo, but you know, that's just another one of those, uh, useless failures of a decision that I've made in my life. And I'm sure I'll make many more, <laughs> but if I had to do all over again, I would rent my place out. I would have put my valuable stuff, even my car and stuff in storage. And then gone for a year and see, you know, see where I was, see how I feel. So but anyway, that's it. I don't, this may be a completely useless video to many people, but you know, it's just some stuff that I wanted to share uh, with you, you know. I forgot this, the, the, the guy that, you know, he, he said that it is the only thing worse than retiring too late is retiring too early to a place you end up liking, not liking a year later, but you don't have enough income to go home. That's a hard nut to figure out. And then another guy said, that's exactly what keeps me up at night, selling my house that I would never be able to replace if we came back and leaving my job. Very, very tough decisions. All of this involves tough decisions, folks. It's not an easy thing to do, to pack up and move off to another country. It's not easy at all. If you listen to YouTubers and they tell you that it is, you need to stop following them. Follow this guy here. Because I'll just tell you, tell you the truth and tell you, tell you what it's like, okay? And what it's been like for me. So anyway, 
Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for watching this video. If you like this video, give me that thumbs up. If you didn't like it, bite my ass, okay? And I say that with peace and love. See you on the next one. Ciao, ciao.